Hi, this is Mark Helm. I'm the author of Creating Wealth Through Self Storage. And this is January 2024. Not sure when you'll be seeing this, but as I'm recording it, that's when it is. And I, if you've been watching these episodes for a while in 2024, I think you'll notice a few format changes and we're going to have a lot more people involved in these episodes. But I thought I'd start the year off with a kind of a back to basics on small investors getting into self storage business. And I thought I'd kick it off with talking about exploring the best self storage opportunities I see today for the small investor getting in the self storage space. So thank you for being here. I, what I do is I support the small investor who wants to get in or who wants to grow their self storage business, do so in a way that creates not only true wealth, but a very fulfilling career. And I have a lot of support training, both free and paid for. You can find out more about it at creating wealth through self storage.com. And we haven't picked the date yet, but by next week, we probably will. Towards the end of quarter one, either end of February, sometime in March, we're going to be having a live virtual boot camp that's designed to take you from wherever you are now, all the way to putting your first or your next self storage facility into service. Keep an eye out for that information on that boot camp. But I get a lot of questions today from people. What's I can't figure out how to get into self storage business today. Uh, what's the best opportunities to focus on? Or said another way, some people just say, with interest rates and construction costs where they are, how in the world can anyone get into self storage business today? Well, you can. It takes something. It's always taken something. Even when interest rates were low, we have challenges. But I'll just share with you what I'm focused on. And when I'm working with most small investors, not all, but most small investors, here's what we focus on today. And I've been focused on this for quite a while, but for the most part, I'm focused on expansions and conversions, particularly if this is your entry point into the self storage space. Now I am involved and in, have done and am currently involved in some ground up development. But I'll tell you, if you're a small investor, it's not for the faint of heart today. Approval times take longer. Interest rates are higher. Construction costs are higher and financing is a lot of fun, but we're doing it. But for the most part, the people I work with and myself included, what I really like are expansions and conversions. So let's talk about expansions. What, what am I talking about? If you're new to the self storage space, or if you're relatively new on a facility or two, I really like starting focusing on expansion opportunities. First of all, there's a lot of them. The last statistic I saw, 60% of self storage space today is still mom and pop type facilities. So there's a lot of opportunity out there. What I look for is a smaller mom and pop facility. And I look for like, they do they have parking? Many of these just have a hodgepodge of parking scattered throughout. Most of the time it's not even paved. I look for expansion land next door. I look for, you know, additional land, 25,000 on four acres gives me expansion land. So I look for something where I can expand it. And we do our preliminary research and then validate that research with a feasibility report showing that there's actual demand for more self storage. I like this because I have, or you have existing income coming in. You know, it is not a great return. For the most part, rarely, if ever, is it enough just as is to justify the price if you weren't going to be doing an expansion. But I have income coming in from day one to help me run it, cover my operating expenses and pay the debt. Then as I add the more space, if I run my performance and run my numbers and it comes back looking like I'm going to get when I'm stabilized, you know, you come up with your benchmarks, but 12, 15 percent cash on cash return. I'm going to create, depending on the size of the project, a million to two million in equity. And I'm on a 10 year uh, performa getting north of 20 percent internal rate of return. 
is probably a project I would seriously consider. And projects that on the surface, if you just run the numbers of what's there, suck and don't look like it's something you would do. And then you run your expansion and you're getting numbers like I just talked about. That's one that I would consider or at least explore further. And there's a lot of them out there. Now, you got to work today. I might run 10 to 20 analysis before I find one that works. But that's the business we're in if you're in the business of getting into self-storage space. Now, let's talk about where and then we'll talk about conversions. I haven't forgot about conversions. But where I'm looking today is the biggest challenge I'm facing and many of the people I'm working with are facing besides interest rates and construction costs are the fact that REITs, the large players, have these they have artificially low entry point rental rates on their websites. Very often when the banks run their performance, they're going to be scraping the easiest to find data, which is REIT websites. And the entry point rates are what we're using or banks use to underwrite the rental rate for that particular market. Now there's some validity in that, but the reality is that's not the effective rate those REITs are getting. And it's not very transparent and it's extremely hard to figure out what their effective rate is. Because what happens is they will bring customers in, as you know, and then they will raise the rents considerably 30, 50. Sometimes I've seen over 100% rental rate increase in six to nine months or a year. So it makes it a little bit challenging. Today, I like markets where REITs are close by or REITs maybe even be in that market. But in my particular trade area, they're not many or they're not there. I like having them close by because when I want to exit the property, I've made a lot of money selling my expanded projects to REITs. When we finish, it's something that a REIT would look at but it's probably not something they're too interested in when we buy it. I like tier two, tier three markets or even smaller markets than that. Now, let me tell you how I'm approaching conversions today. I don't just randomly start looking for buildings anywhere in the country. How at least I'm doing it and the people I'm working with are doing it today is we focus on expansions as kind of an entry point to get something going. But let's say, and this happens all the time. I find an expansion and I can't make the numbers work on that deal, but I really like that market. I like that market because it's got good population growth or the rent and, and or the rents are real strong and or there's good job growth and uh, housing costs are extremely high. They're higher than, let's say, storage rents are per square foot. So if I find a market I really like, but I can't find something for sale in that market that works for me, then I will really focus on doing a conversion. And I've made more money doing conversions than anything I've done in the storage space. And a conversion is where I take an existing building and convert it to storage or adaptive reuse to self-storage. So if I find a market I'm, I really like, but the deal didn't work, very often I'll employ a broker, because usually it doesn't cost me anything, the sell, if we do a deal, the broker will make a commission and usually the seller's paying that. I'll pay it if I need to. But if I really like the market, I'll employ a broker or two to help me find what I'm looking for. And depending on your business strategy, that will dictate what you're looking for. What I'm looking for is something where I can have a finished product of 50,000 square feet or more. I don't want to be buried in an industrial park. I want high visibility if possible. And I love metal buildings. There will be a link to an example of a conversion we did in a kind of urban setting. There will also be links to how to analyze expansions and conversions, either ebook or video, depending on whichever one you prefer. But that's how today I'm looking for opportunities. I start by focusing on expansions. Then if I find a market I like, I also dive into conversions in that market. Now, construction costs are higher. Today, when I'm doing a preliminary performa, and you'll, I've seen numbers come in for expansions anywhere from $100 a square foot all the way down to $60 a square foot. A lot depends on where you are, site work costs involved, 
how big you're doing, you know, smaller projects, your square foot per cost is going to go higher because you got less square footage to to spread that out over. But in a typical expansion, we're doing 25,000 square feet, expanding it, let's say another 25,000. If that was the case in my preliminary, preliminary perform, I'd probably budget 70 to $75 a square foot today. And in my preliminary performa, if I'm buying an existing building, I'd probably add another $45 or so on top of that to do the conversion. Now, those numbers are not right. They will change as you get more data coming in. They'll either go up or down. But that's kind of what I'm using today. So if you get the two, the video training on expansions and conversions or the ebook, the numbers in there may be different, but construction costs and interest rates are constantly changing. But those are the numbers I'm using January 2024. In this market, in today's reality, that's kind of what we're focused on. That's the approach we take as we get in or and grow our self-storage business. Now, I am working with some people who are not in the space and they're doing new construction. That's they're coming out of the gate doing that. But for the most part, they've had experience doing it or they already own the land and there's some factors involved. But for the average person who doesn't have a lot of development experience, who maybe has bought and sold houses before or flipped houses and been in the residential space and apartments, and then they want to expand into commercial, this is a safe way to get into the self-storage space today. Whatever your goal is, if it's to be in the self-storage space, I say make this year the year you do it. The best time was 10, 20 years ago. The second best time is today. Why? Because as soon as you get in the self-storage space, that's when you can start creating the wealth that self-storage has to offer. Now you've got to be strategic. You got to know your numbers and nothing guarantees success, but there's a lot of ways to mitigate and cover for any downside that an opportunity may offer. Now, if you're interested in working directly with me, I have a couple of one-on-one -on -one coaching slots available. Uh, there will be a link if you're watching this on YouTube there for that, or if you're reading this in the, on Creating Wealth Through Self Storage, there's a link there. We also have a small but highly powerful, highly effective community of people who meet weekly and we use a platform and there's a lot of training and resources on it. But this group supports each other. I'm in it and I get as much support as I give in that group. And there'll also be a link to find out information about that. So if you want some support in getting in or growing your self storage business, there's a couple opportunities there. I only work with five people one-on-one. -on -one. I just, my schedule won't allow me to take on any more. But we also have the inner circle, which is the community I talked about. Or you can use a lot of the free resources at Creating Wealth through self-storage or take some of the classes. But I'm there to support you if you really want to make this year the year you get in the self-storage business. So good luck. Thank you, and I look forward to being with you next week as we dive into another episode in this Back to the Basics series. Thanks.